Let Lily lick Lionel's lusty leathers. <laughs> you got it. You want me to go? <laughs> you want me to go through it fast now? Yeah. See how many times you can get it. Let Lily lick Lionel's lusty leathers. Let Lily lick Lionel's lusty leathers. Let, let... <laughs> You're all warmed up. Digging in the crates for something good. Hidden gems often misunderstood. Cause you know there's no such thing as too much. Miscellaneous important stuff. This week, I was in Irvine, California, visiting my friend Nick, who is featured in episode two. Nick and I have been friends for around 20 years now. If you want to learn a little bit more about Nick, I'm actually starting to vlog with each person I do an episode with. So those will be on Instagram and also our YouTube channel, which is miscellaneous important stuff. So anyway, uh, today's episode, Nick and I talked about why podcasts in the first place, why podcasting is important. I think it's something that I ask myself a lot, even with other creative work, wondering what's the point of doing it? Who am I doing it for? Am I doing it for myself or for other people? There are a lot of those questions I think that I still have and still haven't figured out, but it was a good conversation to have. It was a good it was a good starting point for hopefully other conversations in the future. I had a lot of fun, like I do every week, and I hope you guys enjoy it too. Here it is. Okay. So Jay, before yeah. we get started. Uh, tell me what is your podcast and what made you start wanting to do it before we get started or we're getting started. I, I, uh, starting (laughs) over. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, so go ahead and tell me what, what, what is your podcast? First of all. Okay. So the podcast is miscellaneous, important stuff. And I've had, a lot of people, I think, a little confused to why it's called that because it's such a long name and it's it doesn't necessarily mean anything to most people. Um, but the reason I've called it that is because for a long time I've had this category of stuff in my life that's called miscellaneous important stuff. It usually starts out as movie tickets or concert tickets mm-hmm. that I'll put into like a gallon Ziploc bag. Just little things that I don't want to get rid of that I, I have no place for. So I'll put it there, and that gets transferred to a box. And then once that's filled up, it gets transferred to storage. But I just have this whole category of stuff in my life that's important to me that I don't want to get rid of. And I kind of looked at this podcast the same way. It's a collection of things or subjects or people that mm. are important to me or that I want to talk to. Um that this gives me a reason to do that. So, I I mean, I think you can kind of turn it two ways and I think both of them actually apply. So one way is just miscellaneous, important stuff. You don't want to lose the conversations that you have with people that you may have lost a little bit of touch with over the years, whether it's former coworkers, whether it's friends that you've grown up with and that you spent a lot of time with. Um, but then there's also the other side of, um, actually kind of recording some of these conversations and, and like making new important moments, I guess, and having these recorded and tracked down to where like future generations and like your, your kids and your kids, kids and, uh, the Russian doll situation there, uh, as Jermaine would say, um, <laughs> uh, that kind of, um, plays into it as well like i think both uh, are there for you is that is that correct yeah definitely i mean it's really yeah the conversations are sort of an extension of the things that are important to me that i keep mm-hmm. it's just i you know like we were talking about before even the conversations that i've had a month ago that i can go back and listen to it's really interesting to see if my perspectives changed at all or just hearing myself talk about that thing and and knowing that I get to keep that and I can always look back on that and I can use that 
mm-hmm. to help other people understand me. Um, and even one, the, the one with Calvin, the podcast that never was that episode, yep. I recorded that over a year ago and it was such a weird experience listening back to it, yep. seeing how much I've changed in that period of time. So yep. I think a lot of people will start a podcast with the idea that they want to be famous or they want to make a bunch of money or they just want attention. And so I think I have to constantly ask myself the reasons for starting this and making sure that I'm still on that same path and that I'm not letting people influence me too much to, you know, because there's a lot of things you can do to make your podcast popular. Mm -hmm. Everyone's fighting for attention. Everyone wants to be famous. And when I really look at my life, that's not, that's not what I've been interested in. Mm Mm-hmm. And, but yeah, I think what, so short answer long, uh, I agree with what you're saying as far as why, why these conversations are important. So I I may be spinning this off way in the wrong direction, but I think you brought up an interesting point and that is just about how like perspectives change over time and like the way you look at things for sure changes over time. Uh, so, I mean, I can kind of try to think of a good one for me, but if you were trying uh, to identify one thing that you think changed the most in your perspective over the last, like, let's say 10 years, what would you say would be like your like big perspective shift in that time? Oh, you know, when you were first asking that, I was like, I don't have any idea how to answer it uh-huh. because I was thinking more recent. But going back 10 years, I would say the way I've changed, the biggest change has been how I look at other people Mm -hmm. and how I look at problems in the world. And I think I was much more extreme in my views. Not extreme, that's probably, but I was, I'd go to one, either one end of the spectrum or the other. And now I feel like I sit right in the center wanting Mm -hmm. to understand each side of any issue instead of arguing about it, I want to mm-hmm. say, well, why, why does this person feel this way? Or even people that I don't like in the world, I'm, I'm interested in trying to understand why they are the way they are instead of just being angry about why they are the way they are, you know, because we, I think we all have a tendency to just look at people like, oh, well, that's them, those people over there. Yeah. Instead of trying to understand why we're pretty much all the same as far as problems and, issues we deal with yeah i think that makes sense i i guess like trying to think through it for me i know that that you're very familiar with this this part uh but i i wouldn't say that it's gone away for me but um just kind of the low self-esteem aspect and i i feel like the the natural progression for people like with uh like lower self-esteem is as they get older, it kind of doesn't matter to them as much. And they kind of lose like the care for that. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm like where I need to be or where I should be, but I guess that kind of, that would be a big shift for me. I would say is like not, caring as much and i and i never really cared from like what other people thought of me just i didn't have necessarily the best positive opinion of myself but i feel like i have a healthier um opinion of myself now than i used to but do you know when that changed or has it just been i I was certainly gradual it was not like a a moment where i was just like aha but i it's just as i've grown older i would say that that yeah, I, I still have my moments, but it's not not where it used to be. See, and it would have been great if we had a recording of you ten years ago. Yeah. Well, we do in some ways, not not like this though. But we we certainly have many many recordings of myself. Yeah, we just don't have you talking <laughs> about it. Yeah. That would be interesting though, where you talk about how how you feel about yourself or how you feel about the world mm-hmm. like ten years ago, where we interview you and then you can look back on that and be like, why was I the way that I was? Yeah. So, uh, there was actually a, an exercise that, um, my English teacher, senior high school, senior English teacher had us do where we would write a letter to ourselves, 
Um, and that uh, letter, we would open up, like we would date it for five years in the future. And the stuff that I wrote to myself <laughs> was like low self-esteem, low self-esteem. Low self-esteem. <laughs> and All like, of it? And I was a, a, a big part of it was just like, like aspirational for things like at that point I had never had a a relationship or anything like that and um just kind of man I hope you have (laughs) have progressed I don't know uh but I I guess so I I do have like I don't know whether I still have that letter but there were documented evidence of low self-esteem I think it's a good thing though it's a good thing what to have to have the evidence of that oh yeah i mean just to show the progression yeah i mean i felt the same way yeah and you know i do that every year the the letter thing have i told you that oh no i don't think you've told me so i actually i've been late sending mine this year but on new year's eve every year i read what i wrote to myself the previous year Mm -hmm. and then New Year's Day, usually I write a new letter and then I won't open it again until mm-hmm. the the next year. Um, and it's always interesting because I usually write about... And you think about it, by the time you read it, some of the stuff you're reading is from two years ago because it'll be New Year's Eve, I'll write about everything from that previous year. But then you move forward a year, so it could be January of 2016 and you're reading the letter on, you know... December 31st, 2018. So it's, you forget that that stuff was that recent, but also yeah. that far away. And it's like, yeah. man, the amount of things that have happened in that time period is just, I'm always yeah. reminded of it. And I'm, I can't believe that I'll be like, that's when that happened. And yeah, it's crazy. This is how I'm feeling today. So it's like this uh, yearly documentation of, of my feelings and how I've changed. To kind of reverse it as well. Uh, there's um, times where I've actually gone back and found uh, like papers, like sometimes school papers, like physics and everything about things that I knew like a lot before and that I was kind of rediscovering and didn't even realize I knew before. It's kind of weird how memory works that you don't even realize whenever you, <laughs> you don't know that you've already experienced something. Yeah. I don't know what you mean. So, <laughs> like you read it and you realize you do know it yeah like you read it so there were physics concepts that i was learning in school like around senior year that i was looking back later around like seventh grade paperwork and i was like oh my gosh like this homework is for the stuff that i'm learning now and i didn't even realize that i had learned it before yeah, I've had that. Or you like see something somebody else is working on that you've yeah. done previously, and you're like, "Oh yeah, I I know how to do that." Oh, this is weird. Yeah, you know, this is sort of off topic, but I was talking to some people about, um, I think it was just about being in AP classes and knowing that maybe it didn't fit into that group, and how that a lot of those people are different in some ways, just their approach and personality and all that. Yeah. And it reminded me of. Uh, AP calculus in the senior year, right? Yep. And how there's <laughs> the entire class sitting on one side of the room, split down the middle. You have chairs on the left, chairs on the right. We sat on the right side, and for that entire year, nobody ever ventured over there to yep. sit with us. It was like it was a clear split in people and maybe personality too. And yep. I just thought it was so weird. N- not to to break what you said but i think there were a couple of times where we had like off days or whatever where i think i remember one time like aiden coming over and like <sighs> chatting for a while or something I must have blocked it out because i didn't want to it most of the time no <laughs> nobody was on that side for sure i was also falling asleep in that class so i there's do you remember <laughs> yeah. that i probably don't remember yeah the uh uh paper folding use whenever you're way up way early in the morning and didn't get good sleep. Yeah. And you know what's funny now? Because since we're talking about like keeping track of the past, I don't think I realized when I made the... In college, I made that documentary about delivering papers. 
I don't think I ever could have known then how important that would be to me now, especially yeah. since papers aren't going to be around yep. at all. I mean, there's still some places I'm sure they're delivered and people read them, but 10 years from now and 20 years from now, it's just not going to be a thing. And I feel really lucky to have done that just because of how important that was in my life. Five and a half years. I think most people now probably don't even know that about me that I delivered seven days a week for all that time and in high school yep. And it just became the normal, but well, I mean, it became your life for, for a long yeah, time, right? You, it was everything. You got zero vacation time. Mm -hmm. Like, if you wanted to take vacation, you had to find somebody to do your route for you. Yeah, it's such like I can't even imagine that now because I I always just dreamed of having a job where you could have vacation time, and I mean, it literally became a full time job. People think it's you yeah. know a couple hours here and there, but no, it would everything that you had to do it could be over 40 hours a week at mm. least 40 30 or 40 plus school and all that and not to i don't want to get into that like everyone's saying well my life was this i i just i'm just saying as an experience it's something that most people aren't going to be able to understand because it's not going to be around so i think if i do ever have kids getting to show them that and saying this is what i did and this is how i was and this is mm -hmm. was my experience that's something that I think we don't get from our parents or grandparents now. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I see something from my mom or dad, just pictures or um, I have like this. Uh, is it autobiography if you write about yourself? Yes, it's autobiography. So I have an autobiography from my dad that he wrote when he was in high school, like 16. Mm -hmm. I love that thing. I think he might have been getting rid of it or I took it. But that to me, that stuff's important getting to see like where my dad's head was at back mm -hmm. then and how he saw everything but that's rare because that's a written report you know and then a picture here or there but to have a documentary of yourself i don't know i just think that's cool and this this the idea of this podcast will just enhance that so you mentioned your dad like i i mean like you know my my father passed away whenever i was 12 years old mm -hmm. so i didn't get to know him like through my adult life very well um and i had have never been one that kind of um want wanted to like do a career path or whatever to to follow in the footsteps or like i, I wanted to to just do what i enjoyed and i i feel like it's important to make sure that you do what you enjoy um but going back through um, some of his certifications and everything that he had um, that through some paperwork that we found, uh, since I'm a software engineer, I ended up finding that a lot of the certifications were like languages that I had written in and languages that I, I knew. And yeah, I mean, it was kind of that that um random if you will like seemingly unimportant like certification document that's just sitting there yeah was like kind of helped me feel like a better connection and like wow like we we t like even though i wasn't intentionally like trying to go for doing what he was doing like we matched up and we had that interest and we were using some of the same languages to develop and yeah i think that that kind of thing is like, like more powerful than you would think it would be yeah because it's like you have a connection to your dad that you never could have known when you were 12 yeah because you didn't actually find out what you're going to be doing yet yeah but then it's like oh man we're more similar and I'm yep. sure he had a bigger influence on you in certain ways that you didn't know yet. Yeah. yeah. And like, maybe you wouldn't have known that if you didn't find those. Well, yeah. Like I, I can only imagine the kind of conversations we would have been able to have. And like, we, I'm sure we would have enjoyed some of those discussions that I have with my coworkers and everything. And I was never the age where I could have anything close to that kind of conversation. And yeah, I, missed out on those kind of opportunities do you wish there would have been more things like that left behind uh i think i i think i 
the only thing that could have necessarily been different would be if the technology was different to where mm -hmm. there was more of an opportunity, which I think is where we may look out. I don't know whether the, maybe the next generation is even more lucky than we are, but that's true. I think that we get to have these things. Well, which for some people is a blessing and a curse, right? There is something that <laughs> some, something there are you don't some want documented. That, yeah. Don't want to, to be left out there. But yeah, I, I think that, I mean, there's artwork that he did and there, there's like, there are a lot of artifacts, uh, that were left over. And, um, I think, I think I mentioned it earlier, but like the, the things aren't really all that important to me, but it, like finding out the things that I didn't know about him is the, the interesting part. Cause I, I kind of feel like instead of for the things that I already knew about him, I kind of feel like I am just like, since I'm pretty similar to him, I'm kind of a living reminder or like I am already like living out kind of some of the things that, that he uh, like character traits and everything. So I don't necessarily need physical reminders of the things that we are similar, but those things that I didn't know, I think is, is like that sweet spot. Yeah. I think that helps me a little bit too, because I just, I just keep all these, random things and there are times where i'm like i don't even know why i'm keeping it yep. i just feel like i should and because i have a place for those things now it's easier for me too so it's not as curated i'm just like mm, yeah. yeah that'll go in there but part of that i think is this hope that there'll be a day that somebody finds that important because there's a good chance a lot of that stuff i'll never look at again yeah. maybe i have a memory of it maybe i'll open it up and i'll i'll, I'll say oh yeah that was that time but you know, what if I do die? What if I had a kid and um, I died and they were younger? I think that would be so important for me to know that they had something so they could understand what I was. Yeah. You know, maybe that's what anyone wants, though, is to leave something behind to feel like you mattered. Yeah. That you created something, that you did something. I, I feel like that's that's what most people want, even if. So I, I think you can go too far to the other side and maybe this is not really uh, matching up with what you're talking about, but my grandma is really a hoarder. And so that's a different thing. It's it is really a different thing. So uh, my, I, whenever she was moving out of her home, uh, my uncle ended up having to go like get some of the boxes and there, there's some weird, like, very yeah like gosh i i think like expired stuff and like yeah some really bad um not clean and everything thing that he had to go through and that wasn't a positive experience for the future generation <laughs> so there needs to be a line somewhere is what yeah. you're saying yeah yeah and that that, that honestly is something I, i'll ask myself i'm yeah. like is this actually important or I don't feel like making the decision, so I just put it in my my special. Yeah. Well, area. I, does it does it like shape the the story that you you think is what is you? I guess. Yeah. Like if it's nothing new, I guess if it's no new data points, then or may, I don't know. That's maybe that's what I should start asking myself. That's actually a good question. If there are no new data points. Like even, I'm, even, no, I'm serious though. Framing it like that and saying, is this actually adding adding anything to what this story is? Yeah, yeah. Or is it just something that's gonna muddy up the waters? Yeah, like, and make. I mean, the the amount of like data points, it just in general, is gonna dilute the overall. So, that's true. Like you're gonna lose the actual. Yeah, if it's just a whole bunch of. Uh, stuff instead of important things uh, miscellaneous and important things yeah yeah exactly um, then yeah I think it can definitely be diluted at that point although miscellaneous important things would imply that there's not really a structured story that is. <laughs> yeah it, it miscellaneous <laughs> yeah exactly. which maybe that's all of what I am that I'm just yeah. all over the place and that that is the story yeah Maybe it is. I mean, um, it's sort of true. I, I do feel like I'm sort of all over the place and in a good way. I just yeah. have a lot of things I want to do or 
see yeah. or say. So let let's uh, let's do this. Um, can you take one minute to talk to yourself over Ooh. for the next year? Like, what would you say to yourself next year? Well, I've already started an email. Uh huh. Um, if I feel like what I say to myself going forward is always the same that I hope Jay I hope that you will be better I hope that you've continued to grow and to learn I hope you've um, worked on your current relationships and and found new ones I hope that you're happy and healthy and I hope that you've let go of some of the things that have hurt you in the past um, I don't know it really is I feel like every year is the same except that I'm um, maybe just talking about some of the things that have already happened just so I remember them but that's always my message that I hope you just continue to grow and learn and be better and keep good relationships in your life how, how about something that has happened to you recently uh -huh. that you don't know you think you might not remember later that you would love to remember later that's a tough question something specific yeah just uh, whatever if something comes to your mind because yeah i mean the this or it being generic doesn't necessarily play to it being again like a new data point right okay here's here's one i don't know if i'd forget this or not it was sort of some it's something that i could forget or i could remember forever and i i think i mentioned it to you um when i first got here my lift driver was i think he was from taiwan um and i was like how long have you been here and he's like 36 years uh so i guess his parents brought him here when he was 11 he was here alone um and he just he just went on to tell me his story basically that he grew up here he got married he got divorced and he's not able to see his kids now and he feels like it's this curse because his parents did that to him and now he's not able to see his kids and it's like the last thing he ever wanted mm -hmm. and how he hopes to go back to Taiwan day, Taiwan one day. And you know, he's only visited during bad times, like when his parents passed away and he, he wants to revisit his roots and he hopes to find um, a woman who he can connect with in that way because she was the, the woman he married, I think was American. He didn't feel that strong connection to with the culture and, um, I don't know. It's just interesting because it it started out as any other conversation in a lift. Just what's the weather like in Oklahoma? Hey, yeah. what's the weather like here? What? It, how's your night going? And then somehow it got to that, and I got the sense that he need, he wanted or needed somebody to listen to that story. Yeah. And I don't know. I, but then I, I I've thought about it several times just since being here, wondering if he's going to be all right. You know, he seemed like he just wanted to say that stuff out loud. And mm -hmm. it, to me, was an important moment because I, I feel like he's just like anybody else, you know. Forget all the other nice. stuff. Just like being married and getting divorced, wanting to see his kids grow up, having issues with his parents. It was just interesting. It's stuff that we can all relate to in some way. Not all the specifics, but everyone's got a piece of that story, I think. Now, for um, just for the... Uh the grandchild in 40, 50 years, uh, uh -huh. listening back to this, I, I'm sorry, what, what is Lyft? Oh, <laughs> that is a great question. Well, it may still be around. You don't know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm teasing, but go ahead. You could. So Lyft is <laughs> like, it's a better taxi. It's a more efficient Do taxi. you really think if they don't know what Lyft is? And a is, taxi <laughs> is something... It's a car that somebody else drives. Now, a car is... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to keep going. It is a paid transportation. You are paying for someone else to transport you. Um, 
there's this thing called an app where you go in there and you you request it and they come find you they know your location yeah i'm sure they're very unimpressed by most of this because in the future you'll be able to just think it right okay uh one more prediction okay what year will the cowboys win the super bowl this year so you're you're calling it 2019 yeah i gotta have some hope in my life because the playoff game is tonight (laughs) exactly um so so i can't really root against them yet um if they do not win which of course they'll win um i'm gonna say like 2040 okay whenever whenever jerry jones is not the owner (laughs) anymore that's probably what will yeah that's a good answer um what about you what is this small thing in your life that you would want to remember oh my goodness yeah Uh, see tough question i i know i i I never said that it was an easy question and uh i think that the the longer that i i say words and that i expand on them the longer that i could (laughs) take to actually think of a good response um i know one thing that i um deal with a lot is like where you have like a lingering injury and mm-hmm. you don't even realize how long that you've like had that uh, so i i haven't even been able to play basketball which i really like to play basketball um i haven't been able to play basketball in about two months because of a right knee injury um, i really need to go in and get it checked um but yeah yeah you should probably go to the doctor i 100 percent. i should go get it checked um it's not like if i walk around it's just fine but it's when you like yeah. are more active yeah well somebody who hates going to the doctor i don't blame you but at the same sorry time, say I that again as as someone who hates going to the doctor i yes. i totally understand but yeah. at the same time you should get that you should right. get that checked I agree. I, that's probably not the kind of uh, thing that I want to remember, but it, something. Well, it's out there now. So. <laughs> okay. Delete that. Remove it's just it. Just that part. Like, Bleep come it on. That This is stuff that I don't want on the internet. I'll be like, you'll answer it, and then it's just like yeah. totally bleeped. The, the one thing I want to remember is. perfect uh i think like what i would like to remember is just how much i am enjoying what i'm working on like how much of a passion i have for the the software that i'm writing and just yeah like knowing just in general how happy i am and how fulfilled i feel you know I want to comment on that too, because do you, do you ever think how crazy it is that you work at Amazon? I know I give you a hard time about not giving yep. me the secrets and all that stuff, but I really yep. do think it's so cool. I always tell people like that you work at Amazon, just, yep. just like that name, you work at Amazon. Cause yep. I remember it's just thinking about it now and looking back to when we were kids, it's just the idea of that to me is still, it's crazy. Yep. Yeah. And I, I don't know whether I ever like saw myself working for Amazon. Uh, Yeah. So I, I think the main thing is just how much of an impact Amazon makes and being a part of that thing that's bigger than yourself. Just, I don't know. It's awesome. And being able to, to work on projects that are actually going to progress society. You know, what's also interesting about that though, is just how, the fact that I think that's crazy is also, um, I think how a lot of people look at their own goals Mm -hmm. because really it's not, I mean, obviously you're talented enough to be there, but it's easy to look at something like that and be like, well, that's, it's Amazon. Like I can't work there. I can't do that. Those are people, those are people at a different level. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to a job like that, I'm sure you figure out like, Oh no, I'm fine. I'm not worthless. (laughs) Well, I, I think that there's, I mean, if people are feeling that, I think that there's two things that I can go through. 
uh, one you can look on and I, this is probably not just related to tech jobs. Um, so I, maybe some people can extract lessons out of this anyway, but there are videos, uh, on YouTube or there's a video at least on YouTube of a guy that, um, didn't have a very good GPA, uh, in <laughs> now you're, now you're just loading. We've it's got a, it, the, it cut off, but I'm still recording okay. audio. So, uh, so for people that, um, like are having those kind of thoughts of, uh, I shouldn't even apply there because I, I, I'm not good enough. The, the person on YouTube was talking about how he had a really low GPA. He didn't, um, like meet the requirements you would think of for like the bigger companies. And what he did was basically he kept going and kept interviewing and kept going and so even whenever he was rejected, he kept trying. So I don't know that it's like a um, novel idea, but he was able to go there and still succeed afterwards. There's also the concept of imposter syndrome oh, where... Yes, I want to do... A, actually, I want to do a whole episode on that. On yeah. imposter syndrome? Yeah. yeah. So I think that there is still like, even if you are succeeding and like from any rational perspective, you, you could say that you're good enough to be there. You still have this feeling of, man, I work with a lot of smart people. I work with great people that are like better than me and all that. Like how, how am I even here? Like, am, or some, some things that like I, I feel, um, on top of that is like sometimes whenever I do something really good, like thinking, was that a mistake? Like, how did I, how did I even come up with that? Yeah. Like, did, was that, was that just luck? But yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's sort of the same way I felt even, uh, you know, going to advertising for the first time, just because there were so many other people actually doing the work that I was doing. And I was surrounded by really talented, creative people, which, I didn't get day to day before it was just me. And I was like, I think I'm doing well, but it's not till I get in the room with other people that are that talented where you go, Oh, I have a lot right. to learn. Yeah. I could do so much better. So you could feel that imposter syndrome, but at the same time, like that's the only way to get better. You want to be in a room full of people who exactly might be better than you. Well, and you already you feel touched, that way. You already touched upon it, right? The, the desire for lifelong learning. Yeah. And if you want lifelong learning, you have to challenge yourself. You have to be around people that you can learn from. You can't just assume that you're going to learn magically. Yeah, that's true. I, I think like for me, when I'm happiest, it's when I'm learning something or progressing in some way. Mm -hmm. If I'm just sitting still doing the same thing day to day, I get really bored. Mm -hmm. I get unhappy very quickly. So even doing this, recording this right now, we'll get done and I'll feel like I accomplished something. Right. And really it didn't take that much effort. We're doing something, but it brings me a lot of joy or fulfillment, I guess. Right. Um, I don't think, I mean, you asked me in the beginning, but I don't think I really got your answer of mm -hmm. why is it important to you to do something like this? What, value yeah. do you well, get out of a podcast yeah and we're we're running low on time so i, I mean maybe this is bringing it back full circle yeah because i got we got five minutes left yeah so i i think the the big thing for me of why i want to do this podcast is for one uh, a way to kind of just get away relax and and uh just enjoy myself and then the the second part would be that um just getting a chance to to hang out with you and talk with you i know that like me moving away for work um made it to where even though we want to hang out a lot more and, and when we were in oklahoma we were hanging out like every week and when we were kids mm -hmm. maybe every day um but like that um some something that we can work on together and something that um like, like you said, can like still help you feel like you're progressing and everything. Uh, 
makes it to where like it's it's something to kind of force us not quote unquote force us to yeah. to think about spending time together yeah and i agree with all all of that you know i i don't know if i touched on all that in my answer but yeah i think it's so important to mm -hmm. it's a way to keep in touch with people because mm -hmm. i think like i mentioned to you earlier today it's it's also it's a chance to have conversations you wouldn't necessarily have mm -hmm. because people just don't have time to just you don't you don't say hey you want to come over and have a conversation it it's hard sometimes for those to happen organically but if you say hey we're going to record this thing what's that topic going to be it's it's an easier starting point right and so i get to even even if nothing ever comes of this it really doesn't matter because I get to have conversations with people that I really like about topics that I'm really interested in and it helps keep relationships healthy. And you know, I, I'm not always good at that. I know that about myself and I think, I think most people aren't great at it. Mm -hmm. Um, especially when there's distance in a relationship, it's just hard. Everyone's got yeah. their day to day life. They're busy. You, you're going to, spend the most time with the people that you work with or that are in close proximity, but to keep up with people day to day, it's hard. So yeah, I think what you said is true. Yeah. And I, I've found the same struggle that you're talking about, right? Where there, there's probably a good 100 plus people that I would love to hang out with or like see again or spend time with, but I am horrible at setting those up or like even just say, Hey, let's go out to lunch or any of that. No, I, I, even though I would love to have lunch with them, I'm terrible at setting that kind of stuff up. Yeah. And I've even had people, you know, ask me about being on the podcast or I'll ask them to be on. And they're like, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. And my answer is usually like, well, whatever it doesn't really matter that much mm -hmm. i mean i do want to talk about stuff that other people might be interested in but at the same time if i were to record something for 40 minutes and it was just nothing i'm okay with that too mm -hmm. and people get too wrapped up and like well i'm n not interesting or i don't know what the topic's going to be and i think oh well who, who cares and we won't we won't talk about anything important well, you, you know what the, the most interesting thing is to listen to a lot of times? And I, I'm sure that you've noticed this in, uh, in listening to a lot of podcasts. The, the things that are the most interesting are people talking about things and being passionate about it and being interested in what they're talking about, right? Yes, because I think everyone can relate to that. Yep. Like, because we all have something that we're really interested in mm -hmm. or, or motivated to do. So when you see that in other people, you're, I think, naturally attracted to it mm -hmm. and you want to be a part of it. Um, well, we have pretty much no time left, but that was a good conversation. Yeah. No, it was really good talking to you again. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll have another one of these. Oh, but yeah. Thanks again. And uh, I guess I'll talk to you later. Thanks so much for listening. That was a fun episode and probably a conversation that needs to continue. Something that I need to continue to ask myself is why do this? Uh, I think it's so important that you're continuing to do the thing you love for the reasons you started to do it. Um, and it's really easy to get away from that, especially in the world we live in today with social media and the pressures to, to present yourself in a certain way. So love these conversations. And if you have anything to add to it, let us know and maybe we'll talk more on that subject. Thanks again for listening and I'll see you next week.